morning, everyone. I'm Nikki. Welcome to today's Coffee with Chosen. Today, I want to talk to you about a super important topic, which is the importance of a good night's sleep. I will be honest in telling you that getting sleep, getting my kids to sleep, has been the number one thing that I have struggled with as a foster and adoptive parent. There have been so many times where it has taken me hours to get my kids to sleep, and then once they finally go to sleep, they wake up several times throughout the night. It's not fun for them, it's not fun for me. So I've spent a lot of time researching, learning, um, going to other professionals in the field for the best advice. And I want to tell you a few things that I've learned that I tell families that I work with and that I implement every day within my own home. The number one thing is a uh, place to start is your nighttime routine. So you wanna make sure that you're going to bed at the same time each night. If your kid is going to bed at eight o'clock, you wanna start the winding down, relaxing, calming process by six o'clock. That's super important. So also consider what kind of physical activities they're doing during that time. You don't wanna have kids jumping, spinning, doing anything that has them going upside down, like headstand somersaults. That actually can activate something in their brain that keeps it going several hours after you stop. So those kind of physical activities are actually better to do in the morning or earlier in the day. The second one is going to be what you feed your kids before bed. So kids are growing, they need food before they go to sleep. And if you have a kid also that on top of that, they have struggled from having food deprivation in the past, any sort of food issues, feeding them before bed is gonna be especially important, but you wanna know what to feed them. So you want it to actually have something that has more carbs and that will keep them full during the night. My best things that I found are a baked potato. You can do this with some vegan butter. Super easy, cheap, and they love it. And the starch and carbs keeps them full. Another thing can be the fiber brownies. So kids love a brownie and the fiber keeps them full throughout the night. Two nights ago, I forgot to give one of these to my son before he went to bed and he was up several times throughout the night. So kids can wake up for a lot of different reasons. They often won't realize that they're hungry maybe. So these things, make sure you're doing them before bed. This can help them stay asleep a lot longer. The third one is gonna be nighttime rituals. So depending on the age of your child, a ritual is gonna look, look different. Start by just shutting off screens. Again, that can, there can be something in your brain that gets activated that even past the time when you're off the screen, it can stay activated. So shut those down a couple hours before bed. Spend some quality one-on-one -on -one time, some quality family time, playing games, sitting and talking. Those things can really help uh, reading stories if the kids are younger. For teens, they love to talk before bed. You can talk about the pit and peak of your day, having that ritual. The thing about rituals is the importance is they help us know what to expect. They can make it a special and fun time. If we think about it, nighttime sleep, that's actually a really vulnerable time for people and especially children who have been through trauma. You have to be able to feel physically and emotionally safe when you're going to sleep because you're no longer in control of your environment. You can't stay on guard. So there's a lot of things going on there. People think a lot about the physical safety, but keeping the emotional safety part in mind. My son loves to go around with me and turn off the lights and lock the doors at night. There's something that just helps him feel a little bit more safe. Praying with your kids, no matter what their age, praying with them, praying before they leave the room also helps create that sense of emotional safety as well. We want to make sure also, and this is the last point, is that we also have our own nighttime routines and rituals that we stick to. I realize that we always talk about these things with the kids, the kids, the kids, but when it came to me going to bed at the same time each night, me turning screens off, I wasn't doing it. So we have to find something that works for us because our sleep is just as important as our kids. So I recently started making a list before I went to bed of all the things that I need to get done yet tomorrow that I didn't get done today. And it helped me because otherwise I was going to bed and thinking of all these things once I got into bed. So try these, try one thing, then once you start implementing that, add other ones in, let us know how we can support you. We're here to help. Thanks for joining us today.